We're back here live. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, covering Velocity Conference. We're here at the co-chair, Steve Souders from Google, high performance engineer. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. This Excited is, to be here. I, I, I know you're looking forward to it all week. The keynotes and all your uh, appearances. You must be super busy. Yeah, I mean, very pretty, busy. Pretty. But you know, it's only three days, and so you know, I can maintain that level. Tomorrow I'll be a little tired, um, yeah. but it's, exci it's exciting, uh, high level of enthusiasm here, and that's something that keeps me going, is people are always excited to talk more about performance and the companies here. We've been uh, com doing the commentary here uh, in theCUBE all week, and, and it's funny, we're trying to put our finger on what kind of conference this is. We kind of know the conference. Great community of people. Um, it's a kernel of some really tight developers. It's certainly a no BS zone in terms of that's concern. And, uh, but you know, DevOps is cloud. Performance is performance. Monitoring, et cetera, all the innovations there. And at the edge, you got user, user experience design. Yeah and performance, which is browser on one hand, mobile on the other, but it's a holistic, integrated world now. Yeah. So DevOps drives this. So the trade-offs between design, stuff that you mentioned on your, on your keynote, that's the theme here, but it's, it's, it's not like a, a cloud conference. Right. And that's not uh, infrastructure yeah. service. Yeah. It's not, oh, how to do great yeah. UI. It's a little bit of both. Was that yeah. part of the design, or is that just demand, or is that, no, how, how did you really look at that? No, it really came from uh, the people who first sat down with uh, Tim O'Reilly and, and pitched the conference is, these were just things that we cared very strongly about, and we knew we were connected with other people that had a lot of big companies that had that same passion for this and sharing best practices and lessons learned. And we just knew that there were lots of, the people at every company who thought that way and could benefit from these insights. And so it does kind of transcend across a lot of different um, spaces, a lot of different uh, types of roles at companies. So you're, you've had the job as chief performance dude at Yahoo for seven years. Yeah. And now Google. Yeah. Um, two different kinds of performance objectives. One's, you know, get the web page to load fast, you know, the home page on Yahoo, and Google is just, you know, the faster it loads, the more quicker people get to their destination, yeah. uh, direct navigation and ad clicking. Yeah. So it's just a numbers game, right? The faster it can get there. But then now it's, it's beyond that now, right? So you got mobile now, integrated. You got Gmail, I got other services from Google, and people have kind of an integrated mindset. So, so what is the new, if you could put your finger on it, what is the new performance variables that people need to be thinking about right now. If you're looking at the holistic DevOps to design. Yeah, I think the big thing that everyone should be thinking about now is mobile, right? And it's not just mobile, in a year or two it's going to be, uh, you know, uh, TV screens, uh, uh, you know, uh, PlayStations, player screens, maybe TV, certainly mobile and tablets falls in there. And in one sense, it's funny because people will kind of, uh, People are totally right and they'll say uh, one thing and the uh, opposite thing and both of them are true. And that is they'll say, isn't the uh, best practices that we should do on mobile the same as desktop? And there's a lot of overlap, there's a lot of truth to that. And they'll say, isn't what we need to do on mobile very different than what we do on desktop? And there's a lot of truth to that as well. And so um, what I tell people is we're still, you know, even though we've been doing mobile for years now, we still haven't figured out all of the variables that go into a good mobile experience, good being fast and reliable, and um, so we're still learning our way, and that's why it's great to have conferences like Velocity, where people who are out there building things that are being used uh, every day on big websites are here, sh here sharing their best practices. Yeah, I, I want to give you some props because you know when I was really trying to did my homework coming into Velocity, I'm like, you know, I love the show. How do I tell my you know, tech geek friends who aren't in the weeds, uh, who aren't under the hood, all the, that, the geeks here, or the tech athletes that are here, what this is. And, and 
It's, it's a confluence of many things, and even analytics. Um, you know, there's a little bit of big data here, right? I mean, uh, the treasure trove of data that's now available to be integrated into not only understanding design and criteria, but also what's working, what's not working, what to feature, what not to feature. That's a UI issue, that's a design issue, that's a DevOps issue. So again, it's the confluence. Um, but the, the real exciting thing that I would want to say is, is that this whole HTTP archive um, initiative that you put together is really fascinating because there is a treasure trove of information out there. Could you share with the folks out there, because I'm looking at the data on our dashboards and the HTTP archive blog post that was, you wrote or has been written about is the most popular shared item on Twitter wow. uh, for your conference. Um, well, it's behind SiliconANGLE TV, but we don't count that. That's our, <laughs> that's our, our site. But, um, but in terms of the geeks, they want to know about this. Yeah. There's a little data science involved. There's a little bit of crowdsourcing. It can be a, a little Kegel competition down the road. Why did you do that project? It's certainly well received. We talked about it earlier today with another guest. Tell yeah. us about the HTTP archive. Yeah, so I started that about three years ago and it came from a very simple motivation. Um, I'd been trying to get the project off the ground for a few years, is when I would talk to uh, various uh, development teams, I just found that no one was tracking the metrics that were really important for their website's performance. And so I would go back to teams uh, you know, every week or every month and I, we would do a check-in on performance and how it was progressing and they would say, yeah, you know, it's gotten worse. Um, you know, we don't know why. And I, I would say things like, well, um, have you added a lot more domains? Have you added a lot more JavaScript? And they would say, well, I don't know. And these were people working on huge websites, like the top websites in the world. And they didn't know how much JavaScript was in each page that they were building and pushing out to the whole world. Yeah. And I said, we, we need a tool, we need an easy way for people to track these kinds of stats across all the world's popular websites. And we could build something like that and have each company decide whether or not they want to adopt it, or or I took the other route, which is, let's build this thing and let's just run it on the entire web. Now I can't run it on the entire web, it's a non-profit project, I'm, uh, it's now part of the Internet Archive, um, but we do, right now we're up to the top 300,000 URLs worldwide, our goal is to hit a million this year. And so you can go and, and if you're in the top 300,000 websites, you can go and we probably have stats on your website like, uh, do you use the expires header? How many requests do you use? How many domains do you use? Um, you know, how much JavaScript is on your site for the last two and a half or three years? And if you're not in the top 300,000, there's also a feature where you can add your website to the list of sites it, analyzed. It, it's just a brilliant idea. It's almost intoxicating to kind of riff on this because it's almost like the, you know, the caveman kind of walking erect over the years. It's like, you can actually look at, you know what, you once used <laughs> JavaScript this way and then you can see efficiencies, right? So you can see the evolution. But I think more importantly, I think what's brilliant is, is that search was genius in the sense that, oh, I'm scraping metadata off the page, content, and surfacing that up for discovery, user experience. And then, but what you do with this that I find certainly fascinating is that you're basically taking the metadata of page structure, yeah. not the content, right. and surfacing that as a big data opportunity to create automation around analytics to see what's good. So and I mean, you can almost write a search engine just for that. And, it, and it's... Uh, Is there uh, a search for that? Uh, can you give me the best page designs? Or no, can we I don't query? have a search around that. Um, the other thing it tells you, besides just the uh, data, the analytics that it generates, is it also uh, helps identify trends. And that's really important for the people who are in the audience here attending this conference. What kind of trends? So uh, we had a great talk about that. Uh, the guys from Bright Cove, uh, which do video JS, so they're a, a video yep. development company. And uh, they were talking about how the HTTP archive is tracking the adoption of HTML5 video formats as well as Flash and how Flash is dropping and that um, you know, uh, HTML5 video is actually going to be supported and more popular on, uh, by more users than Flash probably yeah. this year. It, and so, that, what the, so the takeaway for that kind of trend, yeah. companies should be moving to those uh, newer formats, developers should be coming familiar yeah. with those new programming uh, It's a techniques. sentiment engine. It's an investment yeah. opportunity for them saying, hey, do I want to spend resources building out 
this technology or contributing to this open source project, it truly is a democratization. I mean, no. To me, that's data driven. I mean, no. I just want to say I really like that project. No. I think you hit a home run and with then, that. And then I wanted to do a shout out. You mentioned the popular blog post today. That was actually from my office mate, Ilya Grigoric, where he took the data in this, you know, because we're a nonprofit, part of the Internet Archive, all of the data, all the code is open source. He took the data and loaded it up inside of Google's BigQuery engine. And so I've got this MySQL database that has all this data and it takes me minutes to do a <laughs> query. And now yeah. he's got all the data available to anyone so you don't have to download it and you can run a query. What takes me two minutes, it takes two well, seconds. We interviewed Ilya earlier on, Gregor Keyes was on theCUBE earlier. He and I had a fascinating conversation about that. Again, it's a search engine, it's BI for, for page construction. So is that going to help us in the future? With, with design? Yeah, we're going to see things, I mean, uh, another big part of uh, design, and, and especially, uh, you know, the perception of speed and design as it affects the user experience uh, is images. And so we're going to see a lot of, uh, we're seeing a lot of trends in image formats. We're doing more research on uh, popular image formats. And so uh, Yoav Weiss is another guy who's using a lot of the data out of the HTTP archive. And he's doing studies like how many of the um, images in, in the uh, popular websites are progressive JPEG format, which is good for some performance benefits. Um, how many of them are sized appropriately on mobile devices? Um, so yes, we can get a lot of great trends for design and user experience there too. Uh, I want to ask you, Steve, as we get down to the wire here, I know you got to go, you're really busy, and uh, we gotta, we're going to be booted out at four o'clock today, an hour ahead of our planned schedule, <laughs> so we're trying to get the, all the content out there, all the data out of your head and into the, into the audience's hands on Twitter. Um, what is the biggest surprise here at this show that, that, uh, that, that surprised you, good or bad, that you didn't think was going to pop out of the woodwork? Is there anything that you can share the folks anecdotally, personally, or content-wise? Um, I think just one uh, serendipitous thing was that, you know, we have two co-chairs, John and I, and we independently found keynoters, both of them from the Obama campaign. So I thought that was funny. <laughs> we actually sat down to do scheduling, and we knew before then, but we said, all right, well let's make sure, should we put the two Obama guys on the same day or opposite days? That was one thing, but I, I think the main thing, I shouldn't be surprised about it anymore, but I think one thing is just to come here and see how large this community is, you know, we're sitting here at one end of the exhibit hall, we can't see the other end. It's There's packed. so many people and so many uh, great companies here. So I think, you know, you mentioned before, like it's hard to pigeonhole this conference, and it does, it really does touch on so many different areas and yeah. transcend so many different roles at companies, and yet um, it's really popular. But the that, that the speakers that, and the companies are awesome. But that, well, I, I would say, I think you guys have a good form. I wouldn't be discouraged by that. I think that matches what we're seeing in the marketplace. You're seeing, even on the IT side, which is a little now just getting in the bandwagon, to the progressive early adopters who are doing the pioneering, it's an integrated world. You look at DevOps, what DevOps has done. You're looking at what's going on in the UI. You know, the consumerization of our world, consumerization of IT, this is now the new normal. You yeah. know, the integration, the collaboration. So, yeah. I think you got a good formula. I think this is going to break out. It's going to be really, really big. Uh, and obviously the browser stuff has been phenomenal. Obviously Chrome is amazing, and Re um, Firefox announcing their native support. WebSockets is now really important, Node.js. I mean, these are advancements that are just WebRTC. WebRTC, yeah. again, you know, who would have thought WebSockets would be that killer now? WebRTC, this is just a stuff that's been around for a while, but now, as you get more native into the browser, Good stuff's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Okay, final question. What should people walk away with this year from, uh, from Velocity that you want to share with them? I think the main thing is uh, that performance does have a dramatic impact on the uh, bottom line of whatever business you're in, whether uh, it's something like impressions for a search engine, or downloads for you know, a free software product like Mozilla, or revenue if you're an eBay or an Amazon. Uh, those companies are here as well. And so performance does really have an impact on that. And I think the other thing is, I think we're going to see more of a focus over the next year on something really, really interesting to me, um, coming from a coding and number crunching background, is um, how we need to start getting a better handle on tracking the users, the user experience and the user's perception of a website and how the user engages with a website. So there's a lot of challenges in that. It brings in uh, you know, uh, psychologies, uh, you know, psychological factors, but also 
we really do like to quantify performance if we're going to try to optimize it, and how do you quantify some of those intangibles? You know, we, we started SiliconANGLE blog four years ago, you know, I decided I didn't want to have any ads, it was it's completely data driven, now the cube is all open source content, um, we don't charge for anything, um, we, but we have you know, nice data practice, but I think the, our, our tagline from the beginning was computer science meets social science, and I think what you just talked about was there's a social aspect here, so, a societal benefit, and Kate Matz, who was on earlier, she talked about the pop forms, really interesting angle on the leadership issues, just the human resource opportunity for, not just job training, that's kind of obvious, right? People can, you know, enhance their career, but how to manage in this environment. Yeah. Uh, because it's innovative. Yeah. and change is here. Yeah. Uh, so congratulations, Steve, I really Thanks, appreciate uh, you coming on theCUBE. My pleasure. Um, this is theCUBE, siliconangle.com's exclusive coverage of O'Reilly Media's Velocity Conference. Steve is the co-chair with his, his partner, John. Great program. We'll be back with our next guest after this short break.